I, I'm a weapon owner too, and I'm a Second Amendment supporter. I believe in reasonable rules. A lot of the debates that we have in this building have to do with the trade-off between liberty and security. I just can't stand by idly and watch another young life law in our city, but also in our country. No one wants to see any innocent child or person killed in any way, shape, or form. It, it needs to be clear that you can be opposed to gun violence and not infringe on anyone's right to hunt or to protect themselves and their households. It's cool to have a gun, yes, but a, you need to be responsible enough with your handgun. See, this is a civil right. They should be fighting as to who can protect and enhance that civil right. When young people get active, it has a way of shaking us out of a complacency or indifference or hopelessness. The time is now for young people to stand up. What do we want? Gun control! classroom that he went into was, I mean, that's changed now, but you can see what it looked like in many of the other classrooms at Tech still. They're the same, and the doors are the same. The drill field might have changed a bit, but the grass there is still the same, right? And this patch of blue sky with all the wind that you see, that's all still the same. And so it was in a very similar climate um, that I heard um, from my mother who called me that um, my father wasn't going to come home ever. And so I found a way to make my way down to Blasburg, driving in the middle of the night in very windy weather. Um, and then the next time I saw my father, it was he was dead in a coffin. And um, I could tell that they cleaned him up, right? Because you know, you could see the traces of blood still in the nose and around the mouth, and um, his head didn't lie quite flat. I mean, it was a little too flat, I should say. Um, and uh, my sister and I tried to lift up his head, and my mother wouldn't let us because she didn't want us to see it. Because you see, he was the third or fourth person to be shot, and he was shot in the back of the head. Right now, we're having to fight for a, this constraint on, I think, the Second Amendment and what that means, and a, what that means to us as individuals as well. And I think that's really the underlying conversation that we're having with everything. Like, what is my right as an individual what is, versus what is your right like as part of a society? The first thing, when we get somebody who's interested in a gun, uh, they'll pick out a gun from off of the table. We get their identification and have to make sure that all their information is current and correct on their driver's license. Uh, it has to be for at least six months uh, that they would have lived in that residence, but everything has to be correct on the driver's license or they have to be able to prove where they live. And then they fill out a background check. And I've got the information on here. And they would do, this is the Virginia State form, and it asks a bunch of questions. And then you also have the federal form. They have to fill out both of these forms, and all the information has to match up and be correct. Once this is done, we enter it into the computer, and then it goes to a Virginia State background check and also to the FBI data bank. They um, come back sometimes in 15, 20 minutes, Sometimes it takes much longer, it could take days. But uh, once the application is filled out, the background check is complete, then they can buy their gun and take it home. And you get a natural point ability, and then it, the sling does not interfere with your hand. See how it you puts it up the bar? So it's very ergonomic shooting. And then, and all the hostage rescue team rifles have them, and they're working on putting them on all the FBI's there's not enough law enforcement military in the world to protect you when it comes to your problem, despite the fact that these anti-gun politicians have all the pe people protecting them with guns in the world, right? So pretty, pretty, uh, pretty effective tool. And that's what the Second Amendment's about. The media right now is all, every narrative they push is how guns 
are used to murder people. But the truth is, guns are used for, for every person where the crime is committed, there's at least 10 or more that, whose lives are saved by the presence of a gun. Doesn't necessarily mean they had to shoot the gun. I can't be in crowds, I jump at every loud noise. And I'm one of the lucky ones. Others are paralyzed, they're blind, and living with bullets in their body. Something that may surprise you is, I'm a Republican. I vote in every election. I grew up around hunters. I can still remember when my dad hit his rifle. And my boyfriend of three years is not only a hunter, but just purchased his first handgun. I am all for gun rights if used properly. I've asked him and I've asked other hunters if there's a need for bump stocks to be used in hunting. The answer is always an immediate no. Committee members, I'm asking you to think of my story. 200 mass shootings happen yearly in the US. There is no reason why we need to make this easier for these killers to murder more innocent people. I beseech you to pass this bill and ban bump stocks. Politicians aren't talking to each other anymore. They're not even given reasons anymore. They're not, they just say, no, we want more guns, as many guns as possible. And as much as those on my side of the aisle say, you know, the United States is the only country in the world that has this problem. They don't have these massacres. We have more children dying at the hands of guns in the United States than all industrialized Western nations put together. We're talking past each other. At this point, it's not up to politicians to solve this problem. It's up to you. It's up to people watching this documentary. It's up to constituents. If they don't elect Democrats, they're going to be more gun violence. I don't think you should come to the General Assembly if you're not resilient and willing to take a few steps back before you take a step forward. It is um, troubling and sometimes heartbreaking to uh, not be able to make the advances that we need to on preventing gun violence uh, because people's lives are at stake. That said, uh, if you're going to be a uh, in the General Assembly, a lawmaker, you need to be willing to work on things over a longer period than just one session and expect that things will just happen as easily as perhaps they should. It's just a matter of, it's like this far one side and far the other side because a lot of the Republicans think that just because we pass a bump stock bill or we pass, you know, stronger background checks, then all of a sudden their Second Amendment's gone, which isn't the case. And when the Second Amendment was written, we didn't have AR-15s, so things need to be adjusted for the time that we live in. So I'm holding in my hands a uh, an AR-15, this particular model was made by Colt. Uh, Colt was the original manufacturer for civilian sales and military sales. They bought the rights to produce these rifles from Armalite uh, back in 1959. Um, it's lightweight, reliable, accurate. Um, it's very easy to teach someone how to shoot uh, one of these accurately and safely, uh, which is one reason that the U.S. military has been using a full auto machine gun variation of this gun since the early 1960s. Uh, Colt started selling semi-automatic versions of this rifle uh, in 1964. So we're talking 54 years of this being out in the general public. And it's only been within the last 20 years uh, or less that it has actually been as controversial as it is today. Because they are the number one selling rifle in America, it only stands to reason that they do tend to find their way into bad situations. Um, 
I hate to use a car analogy, but you know, if a Toyota Corolla is the most produced car in America, it probably is involved in most of the accidents. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We've been accused of some pretty horrible things. Uh, when we're being told that we have blood on our hands or when we're being told that we're being compared to Nazis because we have a difference of opinion with respect to what is the best way to provide for not just school security but security for our citizens in general, that's very inflammatory. And you know, try having an honest debate with someone that has already started off the conversation telling you how evil you are. It's almost impossible. And we need to be able to get past that and we need to be able to look at the, again, the things that we already agree on. If we can start implementing those now, well then we can, I think we can work toward a far safer community for our students and for our um, citizens. But if it's going to continue to be ad hominem attacks, I don't see it getting as far as it really needs to get, especially at the pace that it needs to go. What this bill does, it says when, when you are subject to a temporary detention order under 18, you're not eligible to get a firearm when you turn 18. And the reality is, when you're under 18, you can't buy a firearm anyway. So we, we, there's genuinely a loophole in the law, and I, we were able to, to talk to enough legislators, people that are, that are adamantly opposed to any sort of restrictions on firearm ownership, and um, convince them that th this was a loophole. And, and, and honestly, I think for a lot of people, uh, they thought it was already against the law. We've also set up a House Select Committee for the first time in Virginia in, gosh, over 150 years. Uh, specifically to deal with this issue and it's going to be a bipartisan panel. You're going to have various people on there that have uh, relevant backgrounds both not just from the legislative side but also from a law enforcement and security perspective. And I think as we look at the various things that other schools have done in order to address this issue, as we look at the various ideas that people have put out, I think that's going to yield to some uh, legislation next session and, and probably the session following that is all going to be able to effectively address this in a bipartisan manner that, that really gets to some of the issues that I think is going to significantly increase school security and security in general. And I think the Republicans have woken up that they've got to do something. Uh, however, this committee is only going to go so far. It's not going to look at gun violence at all. It's not going to look at gun safety. All it's going to look at is school safety, which is a topic worthy of uh, exploration, but it doesn't solve the problem of gun violence in this country. So a little more background on the, on the uh, select committee. That was the brainchild of the Republican leadership. We were not consulted in that. We're pleased to participate in it, but it wouldn't be our focus. Our focus would be gun violence. So what we've decided to do is put together our own group of people who can go around the state and talk to people about reasonable gun safety measures, solicit their input about what needs to be done, and hopefully develop some additional legislative proposals for next session. Register to vote. Talk and worry your legislation, uh, your legislators. Run for public office. Uh, don't just sit there and see what's going on, then post about it on social media. Stop instigating in the matter and be part of the movement. You can do it. We can do it. Maybe it's easy to say we're just kids, but it takes being kids to stand up like this. You can't ignore us You can't pretend that you don't read the signs You can't ignore lives You can't dismiss us You can't just act like it's all a hashtag It's so much more than that I'd like to remind you for once The future we have set for us looks dark We 
it don't take it apart just <laughs> just like to say for a fact that we made an unspoken pact to defend each other our friends maybe it's easy to say we're just kids but it takes being kids to stand up like this you can't ignore us you can't pretend that you don't read the signs you can't ignore lies you can't dismiss us you can't just act like it's all a hashtag it's so much more than that